Hey everybody, DJ here, and today we're going to be talking about rendering metals in Radeon Pro Render. Keep in mind I'm using a weekly development build, which is 2.5.3, which you can get from the link provided in the description below. I do recommend using the regular version, as there are some bugs and all that in a development version, just like anything else, but it's up to you and what you want to do. So. Before we begin, please go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. And we're going to go ahead and jump into Blender. And the reason I'm doing this one is it looks like a lot of people really enjoyed my uh, tutorial on rendering glass. And I thought, you know, metals have its own sort of thing that you got to deal with. And I figured you guys might want to see how I handle that as well. So here we are inside of Blender. And I have sort of like a setup here with the... Uh, some metals that I've already created in a little composition here. And just so that you are aware of what I'm doing, I'm using the full version. I will not be using the 2.0 because there are some bugs in how it calculates a few things. So make sure that you're using the full version. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh, just a very basic metal shader. So I have a ball here. And how I kind of started this, uh, and this is what I usually will recommend to you guys when you are starting off with creating a material, is if you don't really know how it works, if you have the materials library installed, which I show you in the crash course tutorial that I did a while ago, uh, you can basically just go in here and pick something that you like, and go in here and pick something else that you like. If you um, click on a metal or something like that, you can easily import that material. But we're kind of going to start from scratch, and I'm going to show you from the very beginning how you can make something. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this gold satin here, and I'm going to add a new material. And you'll see it starts off with the principled BSDF, which we're not going to use. Let me go ahead and turn on the screencast keys for you guys. There we go. So it'll be down here in the bottom. And there's also the keyboard and the mouse just in case if you get lost down the bottom left. And so we're going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to add the RPR Uber node. Now I'm using the Node Wrangler add-on, so make sure that you turn that on and that's why I'm going to be doing some shortcuts here to look through these different nodes and basically this is what it starts off as it's just a you know standard let me just hide some of this stuff it's just a standard sort of like shader and there's really not a whole lot going on so in order for us to actually see this as a metal we have to change this right here and if you're used to uh, shaders and all that from the principled BSDF inside of the Blender engine, the, just the regular cycles and EV, it's basically the same thing. The reflection metal in this here, you put that to a one and you automatically get more of what you would expect to see from a metal. Now I'm going to remove some of the roughness here and I'm gonna show you a couple things. So how this works is that there are these weights, okay? So if I take the diffuse weight, for example, and I put that to zero, you'll notice that nothing happens, okay? And I'll put this back to one, and you'll see nothing happens. And if I go here to the color, and I put this on an orange or something, um, and I kind of like change that around, you can see that really there's nothing happening that's different in the way that the material is being rendered. But if you were to take the reflection weight right here and change that to a zero, now you're looking at the diffuse. So if I take the diffuse weight, or sorry, the diffuse color, change that to an orange, there you have the diffuse. Okay, and if I take the roughness, put that to a one, there's a little bit of a change there. Okay. So if I take the reflection and I put it at, say, a 0.5, you get, um, or a 0.15 or something like that, it's kind of like the in-between of the two, but you can see it doesn't really work that well. So this is kind of an either-or situation here. Either you have a reflection of this metal, or you have the uh, diffuse that's over here when you're using metalness. And if I take this down to zero, you can see that there you have a reflection, and you can see the diffuse color underneath it. But if I take the metalness and I put it up to a one, there you have you know, that look. It looks like a metal reflecting like it should. 
Now, the other thing that you can do, just a, a basic overview of this sort of metal, is that you can add uh, what's right here called anisotropy. So, um, no, actually right here. And if you took, take this and you put it to a one, you won't see anything. But if you take the reflection and you put this to, let's say, a 0.1, now you're starting to see what the anisotropy is doing. So if I take this to a zero, you can see that it's kind of a normal reflection, just with some roughness there. And if you take this to a one, you can see that now it's being distorted, kind of like you would see on chrome or uh, something like that, or like an aluminum or something along those lines. So that's basically what that does. Then you have the reflection anisotropy rotation. So if I put that up to a one, it basically will create, oops, it will cr basically create a rotation effect on the anisotropy. Okay. And sometimes this is more visible with different types of objects. So if I take this to a one here, um, there's a little bit of an effect. Uh, it This is really what you can use for something like a... Uh, elevator door or the bottom of a pot or something like that where it's really obvious that there's that rotation going on but you can see that you get a very much very much of a different effect on this object using this anisotropy okay so very very different effect now the other thing that i'm going to touch on very briefly is that if yours is looking kind of dull compared to mine and this is what i cover in the glass tutorial you need to go into your settings so go into sampling not sampling go into quality and you want to find clamping right here okay so clamping it, it starts off as a default in the one area okay and that basically means any value that's bright above one is going to be clamped or reduced to a one and cycles starts at a 10. And a lot of people, when they're going into this render engine, they do not realize that the brightness of the image is not as nice as cycles, basically because this clamping is not set to 10. And that will give you a more one-to-one -one expectation of moving from cycles to this engine and all that. Now, keep in mind that the brighter the radiance, the more that, um, the longer it kind of takes and the more noisy it can be with your render. So, you know, if you want it to be a five or a one or something like that, that'll just have to be something that you decide. Um, I like to have very bright images when I'm making something photorealistic, uh, but it's really up to you on how you want to handle that. But for this tutorial, uh, I'm going to have it clamped to a 10. The other thing that you'll want to do is go into your max ray depth here. And a lot of these start, I think, around a six and a 12 and a, I don't know, a five or something like that. Um, I think this is like a six. It's some, something like this. Um, you can change these to all sorts of different values and it will increase or decrease the time it takes. The max ray depth, um, you can move all these up to 50 if you want. It will take a lot longer, but you'll get a more detailed render. Or if speed is your thing, make sure that you set these to a higher or a, a, a lower setting. For Raycast Epsilon, just leave this at a 0 0.02 for now. You really shouldn't have to move this too much unless you have a gigantic scene or something like that. And there's very specific reasons you can you want to use this. But leave it at a 0 0.02 and you'll be just fine. So let's go back in here and I just want to talk about a couple, a couple different things here. So I'm going to take off the anisotropy and I'm going to take the roughness down to like a 0.1 or something. And what we're going to talk about is basically this effect that happens with metals where often the actual color itself of the metal, the, the actual metal, is usually a bit darker. So something like, um, you know, maybe even down here, okay? But there's usually a brighter sort of reflection that happens where the uh, brightness of the reflected color should be brighter than the actual color of the object itself. And there are ways that you can set up custom shaders and all that inside of cycles with the um, with different shaders and all that. But in here, uh, you can kind of replicate that effect by going into here, turning this on right here. So if you click coding and you change the coding color to a really, really bright color, you basically get that same sort of effect. So if I take this down here and if I change the color to like something obvious, you see how the edge there became orange? Um, or let's see if I can make it more obvious with a green. You can see that 
there's that green around the outside. So that's how you can kind of create that sort of like uh, uh, effect where the edge of a metal or something like that is a bit of a different color. And to make this a little bit more um, like real world, I guess, if you take the reflection color and you move it to something like more like rosy-ish for like a copper, you take the coating color and you move that to like a, you know, rosy-ish color like that, you get this sort of effect here that looks like um, a kind of like copper effect or something like that. So uh, feel free to play with those uh, values and make it, uh, you know, whatever you want, you know, a gold with a really yellow on the outside or something like that. Um, this gives you a lot of variation on how you can actually shade your metals. And the more complex your object, the more things like this are going to be more apparent. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and show you how you can use some of this to your advantage with when making more complex shading using metals. So a lot of times um, when you're new to something and you see something like this, it's very daunting and all that. Um, really, uh, it's not that much crazier from the uh, BSDF, the principal BSDF that you use. There's just a lot more sort of like sliders and stuff going on. And when you play with some of these things, you can kind of figure it out. But for the time being, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to show you how you can control whether or not this is seeing the diffuse, like if this is a rusted metal or something like that, uh, versus whether it's a metal, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit Control-T since I have the uh, Node Wrangler installed, and I'm going to open up, and I'm going to go into Maps, and I'm going to pick this scratched one here and this is basically the materials library images and um, if you don't have them it's really great make sure that you install that from pro render and this isn't really the best looking but we're going to use this anyway so i can just show you uh, how this works so if you take this and instead of putting it into the diffuse weight here i throw this into the reflection metalness right down here and i look through the uber node you'll see that now there's a mixture between the two types. So you have the metal and then the non-metal here. And if you change this to something like, you know, a rusted color or something like that, you know, maybe you'll have something that's, you know, a little bit worn or whatever. So, you know, obviously this is um, just an example of what you can do with it, but you can see that now you have areas that are kind of like scratched up on the surface and all that kind of stuff. And you can then take that, if you go into the vector, add a bump node, Take that same color here, throw it into the height, and then right here, turn on this button here that says normal, turn that on, throw that right in there, and then just tra change the strength. And now you have a bumpy, scratchy surface with the effects that um, we did here with the bump. And then you can also take that same uh, uh, color here the same image and you can throw it through a gradient if you want so if you go converter color ramp throw that through here whoop, right there and then you want to put this into let's say the reflection roughness and also the coating roughness we can then take this and change how shiny everything is based on that color map or that black and white value so you can start to create some really unique PBR materials using these. Just make sure that you, if you want everything to have a certain roughness, you have to pipe it into the right roughness channel. So right here it says reflection, and then there's coating. And then there's also the diffuse roughness right here. I'm not really going to change that, but you can see that um, that image map is going to all these. Now if I take it off of the coating roughness, Remember, there's a coating on the outside, so you can see that coating effect is a lot more shiny there. And you can change the IOR or the index of refraction if you want, and you can even change the thickness of what that coating is like, so you can see how different that can be. Um, I'm just going to put that back to zero there. So a lot of versatility really quickly right there in the RPR Uber node for metals. So in this little composition that I threw together, I basically just used some preset materials here, and then I created this ball as a custom one to show you guys how to create that sort of metal effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how uh, what it looks like when you throw a bunch of this stuff together, 
So I created this ball that you saw on the JPEG. And let's just zoom in on that object there. And let's go ahead and just, since it's taking so long to render this background here, let's just isolate this section. And you can see here, basically, if I uh, take a look at this, this is kind of the node setup that I did. So it's UV unwrapped. I have a mapping node here that uh, shows this bra brass mat. And in, if you take a look at that, it looks something like this one right here. I know it's really small, but basically it's like a, a stainless steel look to it, but it's for brass. And then there's this stone marble uh, normal map that I used here. And I basically piped all that together to create this look right here. And if I take this and I put it down to zero, you can see that that sort of like warped effect there is caused by this reflection and isotropy right here. And if I turn that to zero, you can see how it changes dramatically how that metal is rendered. So if you're doing anything with aluminum, an aluminum bat, if you're doing something with like a pot, pots and pans or something like that, or chrome, you'll have to have some sort of roughness on there with the anisotropy on in order to get that look. And then on the outside, you can see I created this sort of latticed ball effect here. And we, uh, I used a this metal scratched image, which is somewhere in here, this one right here, to create the roughness for that outside look there. And if I wanted to, I could change the diffuse to a sort of like different color um, and all that if I wanted to, to make it even more uh, look like a rusty material and all that, but I just wanted it to look a little bit scratched. So that's basically how you can do that. Now, I will just like always give you a couple disclaimers on how things are going with the engine so far. In the rendering that I did, you uh, will notice right here that there are some values that are not quite correct and these are rendering errors. Not really sure why those are there. You probably won't necessarily see that in your particular scene and all that when you're rendering, but just an FYI, sometimes those show up. With the 1.0 render, as far as the uh, dev build that I'm using right now, I hadn't seen this until this render was done. And if I go in here to the compositing, you can see that I also threw in the Z combine, which, you know, change those values to not be as, you know, crazy of a value. And I also threw it through the denoise and the glare and everything else, but they're still present. They're still visible there. So I'm not exactly sure how to resolve that at the moment. But if you do see that, you might want to play with some of your settings or if you're doing something for production related stuff and all that, you might want to uh, revert back to the actual release build that's available on the AMD website instead of the dev build. And also I've noticed that if you render using uh, two devices, this happens more often. But even when I tried it on the one device, it was still there. So it might just be a bug that's current with this particular uh, build of the engine and all that. But otherwise, you know, have fun playing with the metals. It's a really fun and unique experience with this particular engine to get as good of the quality as you can kind of see here and in the examples that I showed you. So thanks a lot for watching and let me know in the comments below if you found this helpful and what you'd like me to show you guys next time on the next series of tutorials or just tutorial video that I do. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on DJ Tutorials.